we're going into game number two. It is in broken. Oh my god, broken is my voice. <laughs> we're going into broken crowd. Maybe if I do a voice and I don't try to uh, put it out so much, it'll be better. So we're heading into broken crown, where the players that we have on the lower are nuke official on the lower left side of the map. On the upper right side of the map, we're facing with Winkle, who is up one game already. He has to win two more to claim the title of the winner of the Alpha Navigators Cup 8 for this week and for Europe. And we see actually a different build order here. Lorimbo and Nuke Official both prefer the theory style of gameplay here, where you go with a Conclave and an Iron Vault, and that's what you're using to push into the rest of the area. And even getting another Iron Vault. And uh, on the other side, Winkle is actually going for an Iron Vault near the Vision Camp and the other side of the Speed Camp. So they are in structure the same build order because you're going with a conclave first as well as an iron vault but in practice they are remarkably different there is also a meat farm going up near this resource camp what this is going to allow is for a fellhawk to spawn and for uh, winkle to be using that um that gaunt to get those so both players i really love by the way the evolution of this strategy whereas before you would only do it if you had something like a gaunt and a brute so you were able to tank the damage and stay alive from that one now what you're seeing is actually going for it with just one gaunt to start as the sort of anchor point for it which is very very interesting sure the creeps don't lose don't regain the health when they come back that is something that has been discussed a couple of times whether or not they should but you can see here that you're just able to pull back hit them a couple of times with the infest and kind of stay with it one of the interesting side effects of all of this has been um uh the idea that neither of the players has fully captured a creep camp yet they are both still trying to go for that initial creep camp that would hopefully allow them to survive here and i'm gonna lower the volume just a tiny bit sorry fellas just a lightly tiny tiny little bit over here maybe it'll help with the balancing i believe because i'm not gonna be speaking as loud anymore so here's the main attack for the side of nuke official he's gonna find that item vault in the middle of the map but here comes the cavalry on the side of winkle he could get a really good hit on the gun. That would be terrible if he loses the gun in this fight. And he will to just a couple of fiends. And now the guns, the three guns here can absolutely kill those fiends. One of them will go down and the brute is low health. But at least at this very moment, you're not getting as many fiends on this fight as before. It is purely a fight of mathematics with this one as to whether or not uh, someone is going to win. But the brute splits gets the... Uh, win there and the item vault is actually gonna stay this is a very interesting find now going for the chicken on the middle and you still have the resource camp on this side so you can see that the infernals are kind of expanding outwardly as their build orders optimize with having more structures reserved for the outer ages and now going for the resource camps in the middle again that is more fiends but Beyond it being more fiends, it also means that you get the resources from it, which on the total map might amount to something like 300 health, I believe. 300 luminite, I mean. Oh, thank you, Sol Solus Rex. I just saw you follow. Thank you for the follow, my friend. I saw your check tournament the other day. Very nice. Keras uh, almost won that, which is pretty good to see. And now on this match, we're continuing on and the expansion that is going up for the side of Nuke Official is not only late because uh, Winkle already had his up and running, but it's also being threatened here very heavily by the side of Winkle. And I almost feel like Nuke Official is going to be feeling that pressure start to mount as the units die and he's getting harassed. It is not enough. Like, this is not enough to call for a GG, obviously, because you can absolutely stabilize and grow out of this one. And you have more than enough resources to do so, but it feels incredibly tiring to be constantly having to micro against these attacks, whereas your opponent is just macroing behind this. You can see that there is a conclave 
there is another conclave being made and now all of these resources are going to be claimed by Winkle again. So three uh, fiends are going to get away unscathed. The camps, interestingly enough, has not been claimed yet either. So the delay continues on all of these uh, creep camps over the time. So moving now into potentially the health camp to try and get that. He has enough units for it and obviously it would be nice to get a little bit more, I believe is Ethereum that you get when you kill the creep camps. But we will see in a moment what exactly is the benefit of it. And for the health camps, it is Ethereum, 75 Ethereum. That'll probably be enough to produce a Doombringer drop in the near future that amounts to how much uh 15 15 that's 30 that's about five gaunts worth of ethereum right there and of course if you're making a doombringer you can bring those little bad boys onto the other base and you can see it right now going out into the field getting a third as well and now on the side of uh Nuke official, he is trying to regain some of the map control. He's going to deny the vision here. But the problem is that the vision there is not the key problem. The key problem is the Doombringer that is on this side of the map. And it's going to get loaded up with Gaunts, potentially one Brute. We'll see exactly how many. It's actually going to repel an attack. I don't know if Nuke official is going to see that and immediately go, oh, I need to defend my base. That is a Shroud Stone going down. We might expect to see a Shroud Stone manifestation happening very soon because of that. He has an area around this side, which is the view size, that eventually becomes a Shroud Stone, um, the sort of Shroud size of this area. He could use uh, manifestation anywhere within this area uh, if he wants to. So that is one of the reasons why you need to keep one of your imps nearby uh, your units. So now the Doombringer is trying to get kind of sneaky in there. A couple of mid farms going down. This could be very disastrous for the side of Nuke Official. He loses one of the imps. He might lose the mid farms if he doesn't cancel them, but instead Winkle wants to go for the bigger prize. He wants to hit the Ethereum. He wants to hit the other units, but at the same time, a big attack happening now for Nuke Official. He's going full forward. He has a Shroudstone Tower, but this engagement might not be the best. Doombringer is getting hit and the Gaunts are fighting here, but is it going to be enough to call for the GG on the side of Nuke Official? Nuke Official has to pull back. He has a defensive Shroudstone manifestation to use if he wants to for this big fight, but he might need to use that against the Doombringer. The Doombringer barely escapes with his life. That could have been disastrous for Winkle. Had he lost all of that, and now Winkle is questioning something that has happened. Um, yes, indeed he did. Yeah, they are thinking that it is a Shadow Manifestation, but it is not. So the game continues. Thank you, Garlic Doge. Uh, indeed, the boys are moving forward here. So yeah, this tower is not a Shroud Manifestation tower. But it is very scary now to have lost it because it means that Nuke Official cannot use Shroud Manifestation, Shroudstone Manifestation on this area. He doesn't have the Shroudstone anymore, but he's going to GG and that is going to be game number 